Coming to you from the magic city Miami, Florida, we present The Voyage, brought to you by CCNN Live. Good morning, I'm Marcus Caligari. Today is November 15, 2019, and we welcome you to this edition of The Voyage. In Columbus, we have over 50 different clubs that allow students to find their unique passions. One such club has been very successful recently. Jason Corbett tells us more. From nuts and bolts to fully functioning machines, the Columbus Robotics team is using science and technology to pave their way to success. The Robotics Club here at Christopher Columbus High School is essentially an inclusive club or anybody who wants to um, learn more about STEM related fields, specifically robotics, um, can go ahead and join. And so this year, you know, our success could be attributed to our strong senior leaders. We're currently ranked number five in the nation. So a lot of success is due to the hard work that the members put in day in and day out. Uh, my favorite part of the club is the camaraderie that I have with um, all of my best friends that are in the club and putting in a lot of work and time into making the robot the best that it could possibly be. And, it's, it's paid off. And members of the club are using what they've learned for their future endeavors. In the future, I definitely, it's cleared up my, my vision. I would like to study somewhere in engineering or computer science. And if I never joined robotics, I don't think I would have ever been able to really realize that that was my passion. And through this, I spent countless hours working on robotics and it's really shown a, a, a whole entire new era of, of engineering. And with a strong victory at the Coral Park Tournament, the Columbus Robotics Club looks to continue their success in competitions and help its members break into the ever-growing world of STEM. For CCNN Live, I'm Jason Corbett, reporting. Moving on to our calendar update, this Monday, November 18th, our progress report cards are due. Good luck, explorers. And we have finally started the holiday season as on November 19th, our annual toy drive begins. On a similar note, next Wednesday, the turkey drive will take place in front of the school. Later that week, Columbus will be hosting their own food and wine festival on Saturday. And finally, Thanksgiving is approaching rather quickly as there are less than two weeks left before November 28th. For the past several decades, Our Better's Hot Dogs has been a staple for the Columbus community for students like myself to go after school. Every year, this local establishment honors one outstanding member of the community. Juan Pablo Garcia Casales tells us more about this tradition. Known for its delicious hot dogs and traditional American cuisine, Arbiters is a hot spot that's attracted tourists and residents alike for years. And today, they're searching for the strongest hot dog fan in Miami, while also honoring a community member loved by many. I'm Adam, can you pump it? Today is Arbiters' 60th anniversary, and they're building their community. And by building their community, they're honoring me, because all the stuff that we have done together to make our community a better place. And more important, to bring the community together as one. And what better way to honor Grant Miller than with a bench press contest of his own design? Grant felt it would be a good idea to bench press, have a bench press challenge, and so we've got people from far and wide coming over to challenge, and he put me as the standard by which everything would be judged. Needless to say, I have run the competition. I am the winner of the Bench Press Challenge. Uh, I came to Arbiters because this is the day. This is the day that they, they celebrate. You had the music, you've got the food, you've got the camaraderie. Just seeing so many different people, so many different ages coming together. And it's the fellowship and family that is just so much fun about being here today. So thanks for being here today, Grant, congratulations. And after putting their strength to the test on the bench, participants can enjoy a traditional American meal, all while honoring veterans on a patriotic holiday. For CCNN Live, I'm Juan Pablo Garcia Casals reporting. Still to come on The Voyage, David Perez will give us an update on the social media world. And students at Columbus are preparing for one of their biggest charitable events of the year. What's up, sir? So uh, a couple of the guys have been going around thanking teachers and administrators for Thanksgiving and stuff. So uh, I decided to thank you. Dear Ms. Acevedo, with the short amount of time of you being my teacher, you have truly been one of the best teachers I've ever had at Columbus. Mr. O'Neill, thank you for the countless times you've been a mentor to me, even just as a listening ear. Dear Mr. Daniel, I want to thank you for everything you have done for me 
and every other student here at Columbus. You're with a bunch of kids, but you're still willing to let me walk in here and say whatever and do whatever and talk about whatever you know I gotta talk about. Your PA announcements, lunch and learn sessions, and our brief conversations from the past three years have truly made this school a special place. You've made me a better student because of how good of a teacher you are. You, made it, you motivate all of us to be a better person in today's world, so I wanted to say thank you for me and the entire student body. Thank you for everything. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Miss, and happy Thanksgiving. Aw, that was awesome. Thank, thank you. you. No problem. Thank, thank you, Miss. So thank you again, and a happy Thanksgiving to you. And a happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you, Kevin. It means a lot to me. I appreciate you as a teacher. Thank you, sir. Hey Explorers, what's up? Between celebrities teasing new music on social media and Disney establishing its own streaming service, this was an interesting month. My name is David Perez and you're watching What's Trending. <coughs> Let's first start off with the excellent directioner Harry Styles. He made sure to drop all the information of his future via social media, almost two weeks ahead of his Saturday Night Live hosting gig. According to his post, his new album will be titled Fine Line, which fans can finally hold in their hands on December 13th. The post also includes a peek of the album's cover. And Disney Plus opened its doors this Tuesday, but some fans immediately encountered problems trying to access the streaming service. Multiple users on social media said they had trouble signing into Disney Plus when it first went live, while others had problems accessing specific content or using features. Disney Plus customer help account on Twitter blamed the problems on unexpectedly high demand. Open quote, the consumer demand of Disney Plus had exceeded our expectations, end quote. And continuing on Disney Plus, production for the first Marvel Studios show, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is officially underway, as the duo shared a photo from the set. The series was announced earlier this year during San Diego Comic-Con, and this being the first MCU show, I don't know about you, but I'm extremely excited. Well, that's all I have for this edition of What's Trending. From the Twitterverse, I'm David Perez reporting. Thanks, David, for that update on what's new in social media. More locally, last weekend, we honored a former Columbus student with a flag football tournament. Manny Nacarado tells us more. For the second year in a row, the Be The Light Flag Football Bowl has brought friends and football together to raise money for the Ari Arteaga Foundation. Today, we're hosting a flag football tournament for the Ari Arteaga Foundation. Um, this tournament, we came up with it last year. Um, after Adi's passing. That this is something that the community basically um, feels it's something that is worth putting together to give back again. Yeah, I mean, he would have loved this. Like, he, he loved, he was always playing sports. He was always active, but he also loved to have, like, fun with his friends. And, like, but there was always competition there. That was just who he was. And one way to give back to the community is by playing one of the games Ari loved. We started the Be The Light Club in Columbus last year. Uh, our, our objective is basically just to go around schools, less privileged, like less privileged schools, helping out the community. And uh, we rally uh, a lot of volunteers to come out and help set up for events like such as this one, the Be The Light Bowl. And basically it's just to help the less fortunate in the community going through unforeseen tragedies. People that know Adi, that never knew Adi, have really just come together to, to give back and to support the family and um, just help us be the light, which was Adi's motto. The Be The Light Bowl not only gives a chance for kids to have fun playing football, but also helps those who need it most and keeps the light of Ari Arteaga burning bright. Reporting for CCNN Live, I'm Manny Nakarado. Here in Columbus, we value community service above all else. And what better way to show holiday spirit as the National Honor Society hosted its annual blood drive? Kevin Aguera tells us more about this event. For decades, blood drives have benefited local hospitals across America. And now, Columbus is doing its part as the National Honor Society hosts its sixth annual blood drive. One Blood is a blood collecting agency. It's based in Miami-Dade County, and they donate blood to hospitals and clinics. Well, I think a blood drive is like really important here at Columbus because for every one donation we get, that's three lives that are saved. So we always try to increase the number of people that donate each year, and we've done that over the last couple of years. So this year we want to get to the most we can. 
While every donation is important, without the support and effort of the National Honor Society members and moderators, the blood drive wouldn't be as successful as it is today. So they learn how to communicate with the people from the blood drive organization. They learn about donating blood. They learn different aspects of what the importance of blood is in and of itself. While the volunteers do their best on promoting the blood drive, without the donors themselves, the drive wouldn't be as successful as it's been over time. Um, so I chose to donate blood today because uh, for many years, like last year and freshman year, I've been doing the blood drive and I just feel like it can help somebody out who may need it. I know there's a lot of kids in hospitals who need blood and a lot of adults too. And I just feel like if I can sign up for a, a helpful cause just for, you know, in general, I want to do it. And Ending with over 70 donors and enough pints of blood to save 216 potential lives, Columbus hopes that the blood drive will make a substantial impact on the lives of those who need it most. Reporting for CCNN Live, I'm Kevin Angeda. Still to come on The Voyage, Benjamin Kerr updates us on a great month for Columbus sports. And Adrian Boton tells us about a local burger event. Stay with us right here on The Voyage. Through the excitement. You got the phone? And craziness. Will you do this? With some adventure. Along the fun. Mommy, I got you something. And love. Through the good and bad times, you can always rely on family. Recently, if you've been on social media, you've probably heard about the hype surrounding Popeye's chicken sandwich. That's why I decided to make my own homemade version that's completely gluten-free. As someone born with celiac disease, I'm allergic to a protein called gluten. Because of this, I'm not able to try the new Popeye's chicken sandwich, so I've decided to make my own recipe that's gluten-free. So to start us off, we're going to make a marinade for the chicken to soak in. Add two cups of buttermilk into a bowl, then add two teaspoons of chipotle powder, two teaspoons of kosher salt, and two teaspoons of garlic powder. Then after putting on gloves, use a whisk to mix in your buttermilk marinade until it becomes a light orange color. Once mixed to satisfaction, you want to take around six pieces of skinless, boneless chicken thighs and submerge them into your marinade. Put these to cool in the fridge for two hours, and once cooled, we're now ready to dredge the chicken into the gluten-free flour. We're going to add 2 teaspoons of garlic powder, 1.5 teaspoons of smoked paprika, 2 teaspoons of kosher salt, and 1.5 teaspoon of black pepper. Mix this using a whisk and using a pair of tongs, dip the chicken from the marinade into your flour base. Using your left hand, rub and pat in the seasoning until every crevice of your chicken thigh is covered in flour. Repeat this process for every piece of chicken, and now we're ready to head into the fryer to make the chicken nice and crispy. Filling a cast iron pot halfway with canola oil and setting it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, dip your coated chicken into the fryer using a pair of tongs. Leave it in for about 6 minutes or until the chicken develops a nice brown shell. Put your chicken back on the wire rack and now it's time to move on to our signature spicy mayo sauce. We're going to start off by adding 2 cups of mayonnaise into our bowl, followed up by 1 tablespoon of cayenne pepper sauce, 1 tablespoon of paprika, and 1 tablespoon of kosher salt. Moving on to our buns, you're going to want to preheat a skillet on high and add a slice of butter. Then take your sandwich buns and move them around the skillet until they turn a nice brown color. With everything now ready to plate, take our spicy mayo sauce and spread that along the lightly toasted buns. Then take the pickles of your choice and add one to two on the bottom bun. Finally, take the perfectly fried chicken thigh and place that on the bun with the pickles, and there you have it. And would you take a look at that sandwich? I mean, we're really giving Popeye's a run for their money. This is Popeye's sandwich, and this is mine. Which one looks better? I'm gonna have you decide, but for now, I'm gonna keep enjoying my sandwich. And I think everyone at home should give this recipe a shot. So, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. 
Miami is a place known for its beautiful beaches and great social life. In fact, a couple days ago, this city was home to a giant burger event that brought the entire community together. Adrian Boton tells us more about this event. Whether at a restaurant or a family barbecue, burgers have become a staple in American food culture. And here at Miracle Mile, the ninth annual Burgerlicious event is bringing together all grillers across Miami for its annual competition. So I think first and foremost, the burger is an incredibly flexible type of entree. And so our chefs and our restaurants can take those burgers and turn them into something magical, which is what Burgerlicious is all about. This competition means a lot. It's, uh, again, it's, it's just to promote the restaurant, uh, promote the community, uh, give a hand you know, to the community, help out in whatever we can. While Mark and the chefs here continue to provide delicious burgers, without the supporters in attendance, Burgerlicious wouldn't be what it is today. The thing that makes this event so special is that a bunch of local restaurants and restaurants in the area are coming together. And not only is it creating publicity for the restaurants, you're getting a bunch of people together to be able to try you know, products that they may not have been able to or experience. And everybody loves a hamburger. Even if you don't eat meat, there are options available to you that look, taste, and feel like a burger. And so every year, I think folks come here, they love the fellowship, they bring their team members, they bring their significant others, they bring their friends. And who wouldn't like to be out on a cool, breezy night with cold beer and great burgers? As the cooks turn off their grill for the night, Burgerlicious 2019 ends as a great day for all burger lovers. Reporting for CCN Live, I'm Adrian Boton reporting. Switching gears from food to sports, our Columbus football team has been on fire this month. Benji Bakir gives us more with that update. Well, Marcus, not only has the football team been great, but this month has been a fantastic one for Columbus sports. In some cross-country news, the Hellions finished seventh place overall in the state, and the team had its top six runners finish the 5K and under 1703. Congratulations to Columbus Bowling. They placed ninth in the state out of 32 teams and were led by sophomore Marlon Ruiz, who placed third in the state. Congratulations to them once again on their amazing success this season. And finally, moving on to varsity football, the team faced off against the Coral Gables Cavaliers in the first round of the FHSAA playoffs. Right from the start, it was Henry Paris Jr. who had a huge impact on the game, scoring a monstrous four touchdowns. The defense also made its presence known on the field, only allowing a pair of touchdowns. This amazing performance would cause Columbus to take this one 50-14. Now, in the second round of the playoffs, the Explorers faced off against the powerhouse team in the Miami High Stingerese. The Explorers also dominated this matchup as Henry Perez Jr. and Brandon McDuffie put up touchdown after touchdown, and this dominance gave the Explorers the win 35-2. Well, that's all I have in sports. Now back to you, Marcus. That does it for today's show. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up with everything happening this school year. And from all of us here at The Voyage, have a great day, Explorers.